Here's a uh, close-up of a line here. You know, and you can see it, it varies off the edge right here a little bit, but you know, I'm gonna sacrifice that bend uh, for, for uniformity all the way across. I think I'm gonna follow the natural lines of the car. So, um, right here, you know, we had this, uh, this one straight line from uh, this, this lower uh, splitter Follow it up. I'm going to mark it. So you can see right here, I'm going to have to make a slight uh, cutout. Um, for this, this this inlet pipe, so I'm gonna mark the bottom uh, and the top. It's kind of uh, right around there. And on this side, I've got a lot more interference here, um, and I'm gonna mark the bottom. And the top, and yeah, this bumper needs to get cut out. All right, so to get a perfect line, um, I'm gonna use my roto zip with this router bit uh, from the edge here to the blade is one and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna go lay down this this thick ruler. It's about an eighth of an inch thick, uh, one and one fourth inch above my sharpie line. That way, I can have a nice smooth line uh, right, right across the bumper. Believe it or not, this, uh, this middle ruler is exactly uh, one and a quarter inch. So I'm gonna go lay this edge uh, right on the Sharpie line, mark a new Sharpie, that's where I'm gonna go tape down my, uh, my wooden ruler. Double check the measurement. One and a quarter inch on the spot. So I must go use uh, wood. A wood roller. Oh, this is a lot better. That's one and a quarter. One and a quarter. One and a quarter. And let's go make our marks. I want to stop.
here, guys. Instead of doing the uh, the circle, I'm going to do it instead. Let's just do a uh, a simple cutout. I'll come down. Our problem area right there. Maybe what we'll do is we'll come just like that. And we'll see what we like. So let's just gonna cut that out right now. By the way, check that out. So I think that. Uh, and that's pretty damn good. You know what? And I'm glad I didn't go up all the way um, because that's still crash braces right there. And you know, I, I didn't want it visible from a low angle. Um, and what we might do um, is add in some some sheeting here so that the airflow doesn't go up, uh, you know, into the bottom of the crash brace or up, you know, up into the bumper, so it gets directed right into the good stuff. So it's not going to be an easy cut to go in here. I, I am going freehand on this. Uh, make sure you brace the bumper up and try to brace the. Uh, I'm going to cover the cut. Sorry, guys. Um, try to brace tool as much as you can. I have a decently steady hand, but this is going to get a little weird. So uh, if you don't want your bumper to look like uh, you did it, um, ignore this whole thing. Um, and just leave the bumper as it is. But like I said, I already hit the ear with this bumper. Uh, I'm not too worried uh, about kind of looking a little haphazard. Um, the car gets driven flat anyway, so. I'm the other side right now. Here's our bumper. It's a, that's a pretty big opening now. Check that out. You know, I had to had to come in here at a little angle. Uh, you know, to do something. It wasn't all all effed up. Um, you know, I might go back and do that one line. Um, I might keep it like it is. It's got a little angle to it. It makes it symmetrical. Um, so, uh, let's go fill it up with the car right now. Okay, guys, my next move here is to uh, make sure that this uh, I can push in. I'm pretty close to getting it made it up. Um, you can skip this step if you want to, if you push pretty hard to get to um, bolt in with the fender, but I'm going to cut mine out. Um, so. Straight line right here. I mean, it's, this is just this is now just you know personal preference. However, you want to design um, your your cuts, but this is just what I'm doing. So let's get the white balance checked up here. So a straight line out, um, and then right across, so that it'll made flush. Um, I'm still debating whether I want to take 
this top portion off here, you know, kind of cut it along this this bend. Um, I, don't, I like that it hides my deer wire. So I'm gonna go cut this uh, right now. Okay guys, I made the cuts and I actually do recommend cutting it the way that I did. Um, so I went straight out, right over it, and you, and you can see that it allows the lines right flush with the front mount. So that actually worked there really well. The brightness here. So it went out, and now everything, if I can line it up, there we go. Everything joins up now. Technically, um, I'm still touching right here a little bit, so, um, you know, maybe another quarter inch and, and it'll be perfect. There'll be no stress anywhere, uh, but this is it now. Uh, what I'm going to do now is draw with a red marker uh, what this change has done in terms of the surface area. This red marker right here. So yeah, so we got original area shown by the original bumper was 77 inches squared, and we just added 44 inches squared. You see the red line right here. So 77 plus 44 is now 121 square inches. The space that we've got 121 minus 77 over 121, and that is a 36 percent increase in surface area. Uh, I'm gonna go calculate this right now. Okay, freaks. So this bottom area right here is 38.5 inches squared. So if you want to go the full beans, you're going to get an area of 159.5 inches squared uh, compared to the stock, uh, you know, opening. You're going to get an increase of 51 percent. You're going to have 51 percent more area uh, of air hitting your intercooler if you modify your bumper. Um, now, if you just want to do this upper section and, and not do this, this right here, um, that's fine. So you're going to get a 36% increase. If you do want to add uh, this bottom section, which would require a removal of that kind of like lower lip area, but you can still maintain part of it. The difference between um, doing what I just did, so, so uh, the, the, the top and the middle, so top and the middle versus everything, that's a change of 15%. Uh, so, so we go from 36% to 51%, which is a delta of 